Hi everyone, my name's Emma and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting, a channel about Fair Isle Knitting. Today I'm going to be talking about the difference between Jameson and Smith's yarn and Jameson's of Shetland yarn. <laughs> so these are the two main wool producers of Shetland jumper weight wool and their names are really similar so people often get confused. So I've decided to do a video um, about where, uh, the yarns, about a little bit of the history of the companies, um, to explain the differences. Um, because, yeah, it's confusing, especially for new um, Fair Isle knitters. They're like, Jameson's, Jameson, what's the difference? <laughs> uh, where can I get this one? Why, why are they not the same? Anyway, it's confusing. So I'm doing a short informational video on it. I talk too fast. I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> uh, before I start, I'm going to tell you what I'm wearing today because I almost always forget and then I have to do it at the end. So today I'm wearing just a plain raglan jumper. Um, you can use patterns for these, like the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie May is a great um, resource. There's a lot of information in that pattern. If you're a knitter who likes a lot of details in their patterns, that's a great choice. Um, the Woolly Thistle has a vanilla sweater pattern, now it's in a bunch of sizes. It used to only be in one size, which was a problem for some knitters who wanted to make a different size. Um, you can also get Ann Bud's handy book of top-down sweaters. That's what I use often. It gives you charts and numbers for different gauges and different styles of top-down sweaters. Um, and I'll link all those patterns and resources in the show notes. And the reason I wore this today is because um, I knit it in a yarn. Let's see if you can even see it. It's uh, it's kind of a medium purple, iris purple. I think it's called Wild Iris, uh, the color. It's from a company called Beaver Slide Dry Goods in, I think it's in Colorado. Maybe it's in Montana. I should know that. I think it's in Montana. All right, I'll link it in the show notes. Um, it's a family owned company that has, uh, they have like, they make mule spun yarn. And this is the closest non Shetland wool I've used that feels like it's spun in the same way as Jameson's of Shetland wool. Um, this yarn is 80% wool uh, and I think it's merino. It's very soft and 20% mohair. So it's nice and strong. It's two ply. Um, it's not super expensive. It's like, I don't know, $16.95 for a 100 gram skein, which is less expensive than Shetland wool if you're buying it in the same amount, amounts. And it's a family owned company. So um, I recommend checking it out. I learned about it from the book Slow Knitting, which is a great resource. Again, all of these things are linked in the show notes. <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna, gonna launch into the discussion of the two different yarns. Um, I've got one ball here of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. So this says Shetland wool from the Shetland Islands and there's some information about it. There's the shade. Um, this is shade 203 light gray. It says two ply jumper weight uh, 25 grams 115 meters or 125 yards four ply equivalent thickness so it's fingering weight. Um, it's wool and spun. It's made in the UK. This is Jameson's Shetland Spindrift. Very similar yarn. Also 25 grams. Um, approximate length 105 meters. So it's a little bit less yardage just by 10 meters though. So not significant. This is color 150 Atlantic. So it's a dark blue. It's kind of heathered but not with colors other than blue and gray. Um, there's some information about it gauge information and information about distributors. Um, yeah, they're, they're little, they're cute. So these are the two main Shetland wool and spun wools that people tend to use for Fair Isle accessories and garments. Um, but I'm going to start with J and S, Jameson and Smith. Uh, some people call this the wool brokers. That's what people in Shetland apparently call this company. So um, that's a good way to distinguish them. You could call them the wool brokers and Jameson's. <laughs> Um, and this is a bigger company. They produce a lot more wool. Um, and they have a wider range of wool. So they have like several different uh, weights. They have worsted spun and wool and spun. Um, and they produce more wool. So you can actually learn about all their different um, 
yarns in a video. There's a video on YouTube. They have a channel where um, they have lots of interesting videos about Shetland wool, but Ella Gordon, who's a young designer and she works at Jameson and Smith, she does a comparison video of all the different wools that they make and it's really good. So if you want to learn more about the types of yarns they produce and the differences between them, you can check that out. It's linked in the show notes. Um, so my favorite three wools from Jameson and Smith are regular two ply jumper weight, which comes in 25 gram balls. Um, Supreme jumper weight, which is, I should have brought one. It's basically the same thing, but it's a 50 gram ball. Um, Supreme jumper weight is undyed. So there's like, I don't know, maybe nine or fewer shades. Um, and they're named after the type of sheep that they come from, the like color name of the sheep that they come from. The, sh the shade of either brown or gray or white. Um, and it's a little bit thicker than two ply jumper weight because it's less processed. Um, you can also get, this is a worsted spun. It's called Shetland Heritage, Jameson and Smith, real Shetland wool, Shetland Heritage. This is 121 meters and 132 yards, um, but also 25 grams. I got this from the Woolly Thistle. You can get this there. Um, this is Shetland Black. So this is a natural shade. This is a Shetland Heritage. Um, no, it's all called Shetland Heritage. This is the natural, naturally spun, not dyed, undyed shades. Uh, naturals, that's what it's called. And then this is the version that's dyed. So this is silver gray. Um, Shetland Heritage, again, same uh, same yardage. Um, this one is looks a little plumper um, than this one. This looks like very thin and the band almost falls off, but they're the same. If you're using them together, this one's dyed, this one's not, but they're the same. You can also buy Jameson and Smith yarn in a cone. Um, I buy a lot of neutral shades in cones because I find that I use more, I need more like skeins of it and it's more economical to buy it in a cone. A cone is 500 grams. So if you're going off 25 gram balls, this is 20 of those and it costs a lot less. So if you buy 20 balls of this, even in like, let's say you're buying it from the Shetland Wool Brokers website, um, it would be like 60 pounds to buy that, English pounds, um, to buy 20 of these. This is $24.95 and this is 20 balls. So it's economical. Um, some, some people don't like using cones because they sometimes have spinning oil, like too much spinning oil. They've been slicked down. Um, I find it's fine. If you don't like that, you can like wind it into skeins yourself and wash them in the spinning oil and lanolin. Some of it will come out. Uh, they smell more like a sheep also. So they're a little bit less processed and they're not in a nice ball, but I like these. It's great. So if you're knitting a bigger project, you like a sweater that maybe has mostly one color or is like the same background color for the whole thing, you can check out the cones. It's useful. Um, okay, I'm, I'm rambling. So I'm already eight minutes into this video. <laughs> um, so <laughs> there's some books that you can get about Jameson and Smith. So there's this one, Jameson and Smith, A Shetland Story. On the back, you can see that it has 10 patterns, 10. Yeah, there's 10 patterns included. The patterns are nice um, if you are interested in some of these. I think this is the only place you can get some of these patterns. Um, and there's a bunch of essays in it about um, about the company Beyond Knitting, Reputation of Shetland Wool. Here are all the natural shades of the Shetland Heritage natural yarn, for instance. Um, ex yeah, this, chapters on um, color, knitting yarn, and the pattern production. There's um, an essay about sorting Shetland wool. This is really good. It's interesting. You can buy this from a few retailers. I know you can get it at the Woolly Thistle, but they don't always have it in stock. You can also get it from the uh, Shetland Wool Brokers website if you want. Um, currently, this company gets their wool from over 700 Shetland crofters and farmers. All the wool is hand graded or sorted um, by quality and color. And this is great. The wool is incredibly consistent, even across dye lots, I found. Um, the company was founded in the 30s by the Smith family from Scalloway. And I have a map of Shetland here, and that is Scalloway. So it's right, it's where that star is. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. There's Scalloway. 
So along with wool for hand knitting and weaving, you can also get knitwear, blankets, and carpets from them. I finally made notes so that I wouldn't ramble so much and I'm still rambling. So that's just me, apparently. Um, it's also family, uh, Jameson's, sorry. Uh, Jameson's of Shetland. Shetland Spindrift. This company is also family owned. Uh, they've been around for five generations. Uh, they were founded in the 1890s by Robert Jameson of Sandness, which is this dot here, star there. So not too far. This is Lerwick, which is the capital. So they have um, they have companies both have uh, shops in Lerwick. Uh, they like Jameson and Smith are dedicated to the survival and promotion of shell and wool. And this company had a uh, sort of this idea that they would create like real 100% Shetland wool spun in Shetland, not just blends of Shetland wool, which is what was often sold in the early 20th century. Um, Cause people thought that Shetland wool was not strong enough to be spun by itself. They blended it with other wools. Um, and so the company was founded in the 1890s in Sandness um, and Robert Jameson started buying and exchanging wool from local crafters or farmers, people who raise sheep. And then he sold the items as the demand for Shetland hoisery and then Fair Isle pieces increased. So this is like late 19th century and then the boom of Fair Isle started in the early 20th century, like around the 1920s when um, HRH Edward VII, the one who abdicated, he wore a Fair Isle jumper on the golf course. He's holding a dog. It's really a uh, cute dog. My mom has a dog, a little terrier, like a Scottish terrier that looks exactly like the dog he's holding. So I love that. Although his is probably better behaved. My mom's dog would never let anyone hold him in a picture. Well, sometimes he does, but he doesn't look very happy. Um, he's really cute. His name's Hobbs. So you can learn all about this history in this book called The Vintage Shetland Project, which is by Susan Crawford. It is so this has a bunch of patterns, like 25, maybe more patterns. You can see the patterns here. There's a whole lookbook of the patterns. She um, she went to the Shetland Museum and she designed patterns based on pieces that were in the museum. So you can see. Um, I don't know if I would ever knit like any of them to pattern because um, I don't love the puff sleeves, but I definitely love using this book as a resource. And uh, it's also really interesting. Um, historical resource. There's a bunch of essays in the front where she shows like vintage stuff. There's originals. Um, this one, she she has the pattern for that in here. She's recreated it. She's, uh, it's really cool. Her husband is a programmer and so he like made this computer program where she can program in the like stitch counts for each color for per row and then it generates a chart. It's very cool pattern appropriation, there's International Wool Secretariat, Ethel Henry Innovator and Rule Breaker, The Story of Rayon, people used to knit with Rayon a lot, uh, all that. Oh, there's the picture. So there, there he is, Edward VII, and there's his little dog. That dog is a lot smaller than Hobbes. He, Hobbes is much bigger than that, but they look similar. Anyway, so this was a big, it was like a golfing trend. He made it into a golfing trend. So that's the Vintage Shetland Project. You can get this probably from a number of retailers. I got mine from the Woolly Thistle where I get most of my stuff, Shetland wool. Um, yeah, so in the 1950s, Jameson's opened up a shop in Lerwick, which again is the capital. In the 70s and 80s, they managed to start producing 100% Shetland wool spun on Shetland rather than blends. Um, their mill opened in 1981 in Sandness, which is where it was founded. Um, they kept up with machine knitting technology, which was significant at the time, um, so that they could produce Fair Isle patterns through computer technology, which is something that's still done. And there are a few companies in Shetland, which you can learn about through publications, Shetland Wool Week Annuals, um, Shetland Wool Adventures Journal, that kind of, um, those kinds of publications. Um, you can learn about these companies that make machine made um, Shetland, like traditional Shetland pieces, which are very cool. And obviously machines are used for everything now, but hand knitting, 
has obviously declined as women have less to do generally with the advent of women working outside the home in the 20th century and also just machines doing domestic helping with domestic work um, so knitting is not something that um, is done as much as it was there's also some uh, historical um, thing in Shetland called the truck system which is where women would knit and then they would barter the things that they had knit for like food and stuff and they weren't paid very well um, so that was kind of not a great system uh, and it's a good thing that it doesn't exist anymore so uh yeah um jameson's also now makes woven cloth and blankets um since there's demand for that which is cool so both companies have branched out into like and they, they also make knitwear like sweaters they have machines that make sweaters um and other things i think like maybe fair isle designs um you can read all about the mill and the original machinery that they use in this book which is the shetland wool adventures journal volume one um you'll learn things like they operate the only spinning mill on shetland and you'll learn about their processes from fleece breaking um cleaning dyeing color blending spinning etc um carding machines especially are older they chose to keep them because updating them would have required more specialized workers to fix them and they can fix their own machines as they are because they're a lot less complicated there's no computer technology um, etc. So they prefer to repair and um, revitalize. I don't know if you can do that. Uh, they're old machines. Like they clean them regularly. They make sure they still work so that they can um, they can continue to operate them. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, here's another pattern book you can get from Jameson and Smith. It's called Knit Real Shetland. This is just designs. There's no information. Um, but it is 15 knitting projects in real Shetland wool. So there's a little bit of an introduction by Kate Davies, who's, she's great. Um, she's a Scotland, or Scottish, and lives in Scotland, um, designer, knitter. She has a lot of her own books, pattern books, and essays, and interesting stuff. So you can check her out, too. And these are interesting patterns, too. Um, just generally, if you want to collect patterns, those are some good resources for you. Um, so I think that's all about Shetland wool. Um, thanks for watching and you can tune back in to my other videos.